And now for something completely different. Howdy, I'm Dakian, still painting Verthandi. I'm done with the skin for now, so why am I showing you this again? Well, this is more for my benefit than yours, because I always spot things when I watch the video back on my computer that I miss in looking at it in real life. So this is a final little spin to see if there's anything I need to adjust before I seal uh, the skin tones in with some uh, varnish. Uh, right, so let's take a look at that later. Now, to paint the cloak. Uh, why the cloak? Well, because I want to actually paint the hair, but there are some strands of hair attached to the cloak piece and I want to paint them at the same time as I paint the rest of the hair, and painting the cloak is going to be a messy process, so I gotta paint the cloak first. And let's get a big brush, let's get a number two brush here, and start applying a base coat. And let's see how this looks. Now, the cloak is another area that on the DVD they airbrush, mostly. They do some of the highlighting with a brush, but everything else, the shade, base, and most of the highlighting, uh, it, they, they sort of edge highlight with a brush, but everything else is done with an airbrush. I'm going to go about this a different way. I think I mentioned somewhere at the start of the project that I'm going to replace the airbrush with three different techniques. And the first technique you saw on the skin tone was simply layering with glazes. Uh, the technique I'm going to use for the cloak is dry brushing. Uh, but I'm just going to dry brush the highlights. I'm still going to do the base coating and shading via paintbrush. And I'm applying a thin base coat now. And it's a color, I'll show you later how I mixed it up, that is a lot more green than uh, what they do here on the cover art. It's just basic brown, like a, a brown rough weave or something. Uh, I, I wanted to go more green. I, I had this idea, but a, a, a sort of subdued green. The shield is going to be a, a bright green, I want, uh, but I want more green on the mini. And so I'm going to do a sort of mossy green here. And um, I'll show you in a minute how I mix this color up. I'm, I'm just kind of doing this by ear, by the way, as usual, with everything on this model. You're, it's an experiment. I might change it if it doesn't work. So the plan is, as I said, to base coat and shade by brush, uh, the, by, by normal uh, layering methods, then do most of the highlights by dry brushing and final edge highlights. I will paint in very carefully, as yeah, same as they did on the video, by by just precise brushwork. Now, this needs to dry. I need to get in here as well. Oh, am I in reasonably in frame? Okay. Um, this this paint was very wet. It's very thin very thin down with water, mainly. A little bit of medium, but mostly water. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving some streaks here when I'm working the paint. I'm kind of overworking it, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to do multiple layers anyway, and it's better that I avoid any puddles of paint and air bubbles by uh, and popping, like you see here, this this hole, this rent in the cloak, it's covered by a film of paint. Okay, I take that out, and yeah, I need to lay this to one side to dry for a moment, while 
I do, I could perhaps, rather, I'll, I'll try to hold it and see if I can, it can dry while holding because I'm, however I lay it down, some part of it's going to touch the surface beneath and paint is going to rub off, which is not ideal. Uh, this, this sort of moss green color is a combination of two colors. Um, Khaki from the game color line and German Tank Crew 1 Feldgrau from uh, Pants Racist line, also Vallejo. This is a sort of brownish green, a darker color, and this is, this is more a lighter, a brown with some, a little bit of green in it. So I think they go well together. And then we're gonna see what happens when I when I highlight up by adding more the khaki. But first, I need to lay down a good base coat and then shade. And I think this base coat takes a while to dry, so I'm gonna cut the video here and come back when it has dried and apply the second coat of the base color. Okay, so that's dry enough for the second coat. Huh. It's covering reasonably well, but I suspect, as with the skin, I'm gonna need three coats for this sucker. Ah, and I have to think about, what am I gonna shade it with? More green? No, no, no. I think not. To get a deeper color. And the shading is just gonna go into some areas like here, like the really deep folds, and here, for example, that definitely needs a, a, a deeper shade, uh, not a wider shade. Uh, let's see, turn it over. What we got here? Oh, green, 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 green. Well, uh, so um, talking about perhaps other color combinations for this mini, like I decided to go with green here, but I'll, the bikini I'll do a blue grade like they do in, in the studio job. And the leathers are of course gonna be various different variants of brown. The fur under her boots, something pale, yes. Maybe it, it's a pale beige here, I think. Uh, might go with pale gray instead to sort of have something more that's gray apart from just her uh, the cloth the clothing uh, and the shin guards and the chin and knee guards the greaves you might say I'm not really sure what they're supposed to be if they're supposed to be some sort of leather or if it's metal sort of non-metallic uh, bronze look not sure, it looks too pale for that. I think it's supposed to be some sort of hard cured leather, like Cui Boy Lee. I'll have to think about that color for a while. And there's coat number two, essentially done. But not difficult to do these coats, just pop this hole. And I'll cut the camera off for a few minutes to let this dry. See you again. And we're then. back for coat three, which I hope will be the final one. Uh, yeah. The way it's looking, I don't think it's going to need any more. This is going to be covering enough. And then I just have to think of a mix for the shade that will match it. Uh, yeah, this is fairly smooth, I think. And the underside doesn't need to be that smooth, really. I'm not going to highlight that as much. But portions of it will be showing. Uh, some of it... Oh, sorry. I hit the tripod there. Some parts, like the... like this face here or this face will be visible from the side. Down here in the middle of the underside, no, nobody's ever going to see that again. And now my 
mixture of paint has just run out. What am I going to mix the shade from then? Oh well. We'll think of something. And it's possible I, I will have to, once I've finished the bottom here, I'm going to have to go back and touch up the top because I keep, you know, my thumb rubs up against the top portion of the cloak here a little bit often but I'll try to hold by the underside more and there it's almost dried already it was very very thin uh, so I'll just pause for a second while that dries and like I said, mix up a shade color. Okay, so I have a theory about how to shade this. Let's see if it works. Hmm, interesting. That's a darker shade, certainly. And I can sort of mix that up with the normal green. Hmm. And uh, what I'm doing here is I, uh, I, I have one of these double-ended brushes and on one end I have the shade color and on the other hand I have some pure uh, German Tank Crew 1 which I use to sort of quickly wet blend in the edges of, of the shading. which I'll explain in a moment what it is. Uh, it's perhaps not quite dark enough. Could have made it a little bit darker. But, oh well. Hmm. Now it's mixed too much and I'm, I'm getting a shade here. That's not good. Oh well. Uh, it you can see it's kind of a brownish tone. It gets that way when you mix brown, a green with red. Uh, that, that's one way of often of getting a shade color. Is to take your base color and you mix it with a complementary color, and the complementary of green is red. And you gotta be careful when doing that because you, you can lose the red and just turn it brown. Um, hmm. Well, we'll have to see how I like that once it dries. Um, put that aside and I'll explain just quickly what the colors I used were. Like I said, the, the base tone is this German Tanker 1 and I added a very, very dark red, which is also from the Pants Races line, which is called Red Tail Light. It's pretty much the same color as Black Red from the model color range. Um, but, well, since this was a very wet color, I'm going to have to let it dry for a while before I... Or, you know what? I'm going to make a mix very quickly here, which is more of the red tail lights and just a little bit of the green. Let's see how that looks. If that looks more shaded. That's a lot of water. Now let's do some experimenting here and I would, we'll do it on the underside because that doesn't matter so much. If I mess this up, well, nobody's going to see it anyway. Because I'm mixing wet on wet here. Mm. Kind of interesting. Not sure, but... This could be something worth keeping, 
Maybe? I don't know. Hmm. And we want it just in the deepest portions here and here. Maybe a little bit underneath there. The folds there. Eh. We'll see, we'll see. Oh, here of course, this crease, and there. Mix that out. Well, like I said, this is the underside. Um, hmm. Mm -hmm. Not talking too much because I'm focused on what I'm doing here. Pushing the paint in there. There, it's drying on me. Yeah, I, I think I'll leave that to dry for a few minutes before we come back and decide what we need to do more about this. Uh, one issue, it, a common issue you have with sculpts where, where you have these really sharp edges is that light tends to glint off the edges and it tends to make it look as if the paint had rubbed off and you were seeing bare metal and that's sometimes the case because paint does rub off from sharp edges easily but sometimes it's it's just light it's just a natural highlight that makes it look very bright and it fools you into thinking that you've lost some paint like but for instance here that glint that is actually paint that's gone I'm going to have to keep adding that on until it stays on. Oh well. Uh, be back once this.